What makes a good artist great? I would argue that they just make more mistakes than us, but more on that later. I'm Matt, welcome to the show. Today I'm going to take you through my full illustration process for creating this image here. It was a big one. It took me a long time. I did a lot of rendering and I'm going to take you through the whole thing step by step. So stick around. There are so many ways to start an image, but the way that I like to start and the way I started today is in the sketchbook because nothing feels more immediate and satisfying than that pencil on paper feel. And I want the beginning, the genesis of the image to start in a way that was fun and frenetic and energetic. And so I usually start my images in the sketchbook and then I just take a photo with my phone and chuck it into Photoshop. And once it's in there, it's actually pretty easy to get started. You're not looking at a blank white canvas. You've got some tone and value in there. It's a really nice foundation to build from. I don't know what it is about working with the pencil. For me, it works great and I love it and you should give it a shot. But at the end of the day, you do what you want. There's no right way to do this. There's no wrong way. If you feel more confident with that stylus in Photoshop, go ahead and start there. But I like this method. Uh, it's just something that works for me. For some reason, it makes the image feel like it's much closer to completion than it actually is. I think it's something to do with the way that there is value there already. And you can see me throwing some gradients down on the toned background and just getting a color palette pretty much immediately established. I mean, it's obviously not done, but if you were working on a white canvas, you wouldn't get this interaction between the layer modes. So you kind of have to fill that in yourself. And that can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Not to mention Photoshop is not the greatest at getting a nice texture. When you're taking a photo of a sketchbook, you get that nice traditional paper kind of roughness in the background. It's got some teeth, it's got some grip for your brush. Whereas if you just lay down a flat gradient in Photoshop, it just feels weird to work on. It's too perfect. It's too generated. Just pay attention to the strengths and the weaknesses of whatever medium you're working in and try and play into those strengths. You may even find different strengths and different weaknesses. Perhaps you like that soft gradient to work on. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying this works for me. And the takeaway is, Work on your workflow because you can save the most time by focusing on workflow. And if you find a method that works for you and gets good results, get stuck into it. And what I'm getting stuck into right now is laying a foundation. The idea for this step is to throw things down with confidence. You want to make big decisions. You want to throw ideas at the wall because at this stage, it's still pretty easy to mess it up and then save it. You haven't gone too far down the rendering path. You haven't added too much information. Any changes you make now can be easily changed again. So there's really no mistakes at this stage. The one thing you want to really avoid is putting in too much detail and then realizing later on in the process that you've made a big mistake and you need to redraw the whole thing. Better to do it now when it's a mess. And at this stage, when it is a mess like this, lasso tool is your best friend. See what I did there with the arm? I just cut the whole thing out and shifted it. And with a few brush strokes in Photoshop, I've wiped away that arm position and I've completely changed it. I've moved the head around. I'm cutting flowers out and making them bigger, smaller. I'm making big changes to this image. And these things are important to get done early because Right now, it's really easy for me to just grab things and move them around. If I had that arm completely rendered up and then decided at a later date that I wanted to move it, that's a big problem because there's so much more detail packed into this later on in the process that getting all of those edges to match up again and stuff, it's going to be a nightmare. You might also have all sorts of different layer modes working on top of each other. You could really dig yourself a hole. So. At this stage, I'm not worrying about those layers. I'm not doing any of that fancy uh, masks and all that kind of crap. I'm just 
merging everything down onto one plane and I'm making big composition decisions. I'm trying to figure out where my light's coming from. I'm trying to get a nice pleasing arrangement of the objects and I'm trying to establish a base of color to work from because I've got a lot of rendering to do and I want the foundation to be as solid as possible before I get started. Otherwise, there's going to be cracks. At this stage, I'm pretty sure I have all of my major elements in roughly the right place. They're definitely not finished and there's a lot of rendering to do. But I'm at a point where I'm ready to start focusing in a little bit and getting those light and dark areas to read better and building up the 3D forms. So until now, it's been pretty 2D uh, and it's time to introduce proper lighting. Because once you begin to add in this lighting, once you establish where your lights are coming from, you can begin the early stages of rendering, which is pretty simple. To start really effective rendering, you only need to know a couple of things. And the first and most important thing is, where is your light coming from? And I want you to think of a sphere. It's going to look something like this. So we've got a light coming from the top left and slightly towards us. So we'll have our center of light hitting the sphere around here. That is going to show off the local color it's going to be the light side of the sphere. Then we'll move through the half tone, where we're gonna get a little bit more saturation and it's a little bit less in the direct light. You're gonna go through the terminator and into the shadow side of the sphere. Things are gonna get darker. They're gonna to start to take on some reflected light here because any light that missed the sphere is going to bounce around in the environment and come back into those shadows and illuminate them with the environment light. And this is an area where that reflected light that's bounced around in the environment is going to have a hard time getting into these little cracks and crevices and you're going to get very dark shadows. And then the other thing would just be a cast shadow. So when you're rendering something in your scene, I want you to think of this sphere. Imagine which direction the plane you are rendering is facing and then look at this sphere and find the part that is facing in the same direction. And I want you to take the value from this sphere and apply it to that part that you're rendering in your image. And then the only thing you have to think about is the material. Some materials are more reflective, others are less reflective. Some like fur and things like that are completely different but you will figure out ways to describe those things with time and practice. Once you've done enough rendering, and trust me, if you paint for any amount of time, uh, you're going to get pretty tired of rendering. You do it a lot. It's 90% of the work. Once you've done it enough, it just becomes second nature. And you'll begin to realize that this image, most of the work is already done. And it was that first five minutes where I just bashed the image together. Getting that foundation, that is the hard part. Once you know how to render, it's only time. What was I on about at the start of the episode? What is this nonsense about those amazing artists just making more mistakes than the rest of us? Well, it's easy. It's simple. I don't recommend that you try doing an illustration like this. If you're just starting out, forget about all this rendering. You can do this, but look, as a good rule of thumb, if you're watching a time-lapse video of this illustration coming together, the amount you're learning is, in my opinion, roughly equivalent to the amount you notice the image changing. You're making small decisions. You're making small changes. You're learning small amounts. What you really want to do is make those big decisions time and time again so that you can make the foundation of your painting as good as possible. The rendering, whatever, do it later. The last 20% of polish in a painting takes about 80% of the time. So forget about it. If you're just starting out, focus your attention on that first 80% of the painting that's going to take you 20% of the time and then just do five paintings for every one fully rendered painting you do. You're gonna make so many more mistakes. You're gonna learn so much more. You're gonna be putting all of your attention into making the big decisions that count in a piece. And then if you want the painting to look a little bit nicer, focus in 
only on the focal point, the main subject matter, and give that little area of your painting 100% attention. That way, you get a little bit of that rendering practice, taking things to a final, but you don't waste your time on all of those little bits and pieces of details in the background. Because there are a lot of them, and that's a lot of brush time you're going to have to put in. See here, I've got so much work left to do, but if you take a look at the image and make it small and kind of blur your eyes, it looks pretty much finished. And so, I know I told you I'd take you through step by step the entire process of painting this thing, but I'm not going to do that to you, because watching these little details come together is really, really, really boring. See, how much did that change in that time? Really, not much. That said, this detail phase is great for one thing, and that is listening to audiobooks. And if I have one art hack to give you guys, it is pass that time by stimulating your imagination with cool stories. I can't tell you the number of times I've sat down for a massive full day rendering session and just found that the end of the day came and slapped me in the face all of a sudden, and I'd listen to you know, half of the Lord of the Rings or something and had a great time. Because while this rendering may not be the most efficient way to learn how to do art, once it's all feeling a little bit more automatic, it can be just so relaxing and therapeutic. When you know you have a good foundation that you're working on and all you need to do is sit down for 10, 15 hours and just put that detail in and you know that you cannot really break it, it's just an awesome feeling. You know that in a, just a matter of time, you're going to have a cool new image for your portfolio. And you just have to sit back, relax, and get in the zone. Finish it. And speaking of finishing images, I'm going to let this one wrap up. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. That stuff is very important here on YouTube and it really helps the channel to grow. So until next time, do it and I'll see you then.